Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's show. We have a very interesting team here today. So for those of you guys who love playing Assassin's Creed, we have the team from Ubisoft Singapore. Yay! Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Hello. so we have uh, with us here, uh, Fernandez, Vishal, and Jason here. And they are here to share with us a little bit more about how Ubisoft Singapore team, how they work together as a team, and what's their workflow like. Kushan have been here the longest, right? Um, in, in yeah. Team. yeah. Ah. 2014, December started. 8th of December I started. And now it's been six, almost seven years. So six and a half years, let's say. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So how has it been over the six and a half years? Has it, has it changed a lot, you know, as a team? Uh, yes, it has changed a lot. So when I joined as a junior concept artist and uh, I was hired by Kobe, uh, our, currently he's the art director. And at that time, he was, he was a senior. Mm. That time, Kobe was a senior. So, uh, and Kobe has been in the company since a long time, actually, almost since the beginning of Ubisoft Singapore. Mm. Almost, I think so. So his vision has always been, you know, to... His vision was to create a team which all of concept artists and uh, who know we, we learn from each other, we grow together, um, we have these life drawing. So it's like we build like an art culture. That was mm -hmm. his dream since the beginning. And um, today we are exactly like that. Today we like wow. Jason Fernandez, me, uh, Kobe himself, and we have other two guys also. They... We all um, give feedback to each other. We learn from each other. Uh, and before COVID times, we were even having the live drawing sessions every week, still life painting mm. sessions every other week. Um, and I remember when my first first week of uh, Ubisoft, when I started, I was pretty overwhelmed, actually. Oh, how come? Because I had... Uh, Obviously, Kobe is like, he's so good at what he does. Mm -hmm. And I was just like a fresh grad, right? So I was a bit overwhelmed to work in a gaming company, in a concept art team, where left and right, you see these people are coming up with like kick-ass work. <laughs> and I had, my, and my first task was to, because my, my first week of hiring, there was a presentation, like a big presentation. It was, wow. uh, it was called FPP, means First Playable Prototype. Mm. And they were going to do this presentation in Paris. So when I joined in, they, my art director, he asked me, uh, uh, who lives nearby? <laughs> I mean, nearby the office. And I mm. said, I live in Holland Village. So he said, okay, so you live nearby, right? So you're coming back on Saturday to do the, to do, to, to do <laughs> overtime. <laughs> so... Because I live nearby, so he said, "Okay, you're coming on Saturday to do to do the overtime." So I had to do some touch up, uh, touching up pieces on previous concept arts to do the for for, for the presentation. Mm. So it was a bit overwhelming to yeah, but as we progressed, uh, I had to do a lot of uh, designs, and also it was almost back to FZD where you come up with multiple options of mm. regular design. Then you get it approved by the art director. Mm. Then you work on it a bit further. And um, and Kobe was the main source of inspiration for me uh, mm. back then, even today. Uh, his his speed and his thought process is what sometimes um, sometimes surprises me that how mm. fast can he do these things. Uh, but yeah, back to your question, like from beginning, we were... We were a team. We had a team of about uh, four of us back then as well. Uh, we had two females and I think three males. Yeah, mm -hmm. with JC included. And then as we progressed, uh, uh, the, 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 the project kept growing, kept growing. And we kept hiring uh, new people. And then uh, now we have a team which is like so strong. No matter what kind of a task you throw at us, we will definitely deliver with the top results. Uh, but this is all has been going on under, under Kobe's guidance. Right. Wow. Yeah, he, he has been the the main, like the, what do you call? Um, 
he's the he's the senpai and the sage. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he's always been there. Um, right. But yeah, I think this is this was this has been his vision all the time mm. to have a team which are uh, like super skilled, like Fernandez, Jason, mm-hmm. and uh, now we have a few more in the team. So yeah, mm. it's, uh, it's going pretty well. When you mm-hmm. mentioned that uh, when you first entered Ubisoft and you looked to your surrounding, there were like people like Kobe and everyone is like so good. That was how yeah. I felt too when I first joined uh, Ubisoft. You were sitting next to me. Yeah. And I looked to my right, I'm like, oh, what are you, oh, I, how are you doing that? It's just yeah. the, the level the level difference is so high. I, I'm not even sure that I, I can produce the same amount of work, as uh, same quality of work as you did. But yeah, I think uh, you're, you're definitely over there, like super inspiring. I always oh. get inspired looking at your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's really exactly the same, man. Like, uh, when I first come, uh, enter the Ubisoft, and I see like the the whole setup that uh, the art team has, yeah, everyone is like very uh, very motivated, very that is, that the culture is super so different from like my previous job. Like, everyone is like they, they they you can tell that they love art and they are very devoted like to like, improving their art crafting and then everyone's like sharing knowledge. So I was like when I enter, I was like wow, this is like it's like so so surreal, you know. Like, mm. like you you can't. It's very hard to find uh, this kind of dynamic mm. in a in a working culture, because especially when you are. You no, know, like if most people, right? When they think of concept art, they always have the. They might have the conception of like con- you are. You are just by yourself, you know. You're doing concept art. Uh, you're like a solo player. You don't. Mm. Uh, everything is like a. Uh, but when I entered the Ubisoft, I noticed it's so more of a teamwork. Mm. It's not so much on like individual. Mm. Like your work may be fantastic, but if if you like if you don't really like share or like uh work well with other people as a team, then sometimes it's uh, it, it may back, backfire you. Mm. Like uh in uh, yeah. So so I feel that there's something that I no- noticed that oh the, the Ubisoft Singapore it's and especially the art team, it's very mm. like uh, encouraging they always say and uh, yeah yeah it's actually because our, even our art director before Co- I mean Kobe is our current art director but before when Kobe was a senior concept artist we had this art director called Jai um, he made it made it like a habit every day when I joined uh, Fernandez Jason were not there that time but when I joined every day in the evening we would go to this couch area we had a couch mm-hmm. area in the office with the television and we used to discuss every person's concept on the television and then you know just discuss about it talk about how can how can we push to make it better or um yeah just basically driving the discussion like what what have you done today mm-hmm. and what can we make it better and that was also that time at 6 p.m was 6 to 6 30 was a time for us to you know also get to know each other a bit uh give critique, give feedback. Um, and then you go home and then you think, and then you think that because in FZD, you know, you go home and then you you immediately start working as, on your assignments. Mm. So when I went back home during, after the discussions from Ubisoft, I was like, hey, should I, should I do work now or should I relax? Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> because that was the habit, that was the habit that I had from FZD directly. Yes, yes. Uh, but then, um, yeah, the culture is still the same. Even now, we still have, we obviously, because of COVID situation, we don't meet up. Uh, we try to have these online on Microsoft Teams calls as much as we can. Uh, we also have like a common group on Microsoft Teams where all of everyone puts on their work, posts mm-hmm. their work, and then we discuss and give mm-hmm. feedback on the chat itself. Mm-hmm. So, um, Yes, mm. like that. Wow. So it sounds like you guys over the years have built a culture of um, openness and there's a lot of trust, right? Because you guys can just hang out and just really just talk about the work and, and just be who you are. So that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. I think I think Kobe has really kind of like set the uh, basis like, or the foundation for the culture yeah. that you guys have right now. 
Yeah, which is really amazing. Yeah, he definitely also uh, within the company there are also multiple opportunities for us to, you know, talk in front of the entire studio. Mm. So he gave me some opportunities like that. I think Jason was also part of one, mm. um, and this was like before I think Fernandez joined. But after mm. that, I think you we uh, we did we made it online now. So we have I think the once in three months or two months, um, mm. we have a team which will they will call the de- the the devs in the studio in the sound room and then they will. The devs will talk about the latest progress or update on the game, mm-hmm. the project that we are making. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, there are a lot of opportunities as well in the in the studio mm-hmm. uh, for us to because even the studio gave us budget to you know do the live drawing and all that. Mm-hmm. So also we we I mean it's very we we are very very lucky to be in Ubisoft where the culture is so uh, yeah the, the culture is is just is very comfortable and they they they. It's like an academy and like a professional environment at the same time where you learn a lot of things and also <laughs> you're doing the work. Cool. But, but I'm, I'm also like curious, you know, like how do you guys tackle a brief for a project as a team? Like who, who does what when, when, when there's like a new project you know, or someone greenlits a project and say, hey, you know, we've got this idea and we want you guys to work on something. How do you guys navigate through that? So I, I'll just, uh, I, I can start on this. Um, my, I have not been part of uh, uh, like a, like an IP from scratch, right? Mm. So let's say we have we need to make a new IP. Um, I'm not. I don't have that experience because I was hired immediately when the IP has already started. Mm. So since then, uh, the way how Ubisoft works is that we have these milestones. Every milestone is about one and a half to two months. Mm. And then uh, during that milestone, every department, like uh, all the all the cells, we have we call it cells. We have a character cell, we have the ship cell, we have the the world cell. Mm. Uh, so every cells project manager will um, will list down the tasks that we need to do during that mm. particular milestone, mm. and then uh, he or she will just. Uh, list out the task in our uh, uh, Jira. We have this Jira system. And Mm -hmm. then I being like the lead concept artist now, I will uh, mostly talk talk to Jason Fernandez and the other guys to see who wants to take what and depending on their strengths, obviously. And then, uh, and then we start the task on it. Uh, That's, that's how, that's how, uh, that's how we do it now, right now. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like the aggregator, like, you know, when the project manager says, hey, we've got these things to yeah. hit, right? Then Kushal takes the work, look at, looks at it, allocates it, or, you know, ask whoever wants to volunteer for whatever task to do. And, you know, that's how the work is being distributed. Yes. B- yep. b- back in the day when I was not a lead, I was still like intermediate or junior. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the, It was kind of the same. I used to get tasks from Kobe. That Kobe, mm. I used to just depend on Kobe that hey Kobe, what's next? And then he would mm. give me, he would he would explain the task to me and then he would give me the thing. Mm. And uh, you spend depending on the task, you spend about three to five days or two weeks or something. Mm-hmm. And then you deliver the task and then you talk to the art director whether this is on the right track or not. Any favorite task that you guys have uh, worked on so far? There was once uh, I was kind of like tasked on two projects. At the same time, so it's uh, I think uh, I feel it's a uh, it's a great opportunity for me back then. Like I'm thankful for that, like for my art director, like for giving me this opportunity to kind of work on it. So because they, they were kind of like shortage of uh, manpower back then. So right, right, right. So I I was like uh kind of excited at the same time, but also like um uh, stressed about like about it like whether can I manage it uh in terms of the style and also like the uh, manage in terms of the timeline. Mm. So but but it was a short like like a mission to work on this project. But uh so during this period I kinda learned how to uh like how to manage my time well. 
mm. and how how to like kind of like switch my brain uh like my mind from a like a very realistic style mm. to a very like stylized uh art style mm. like, for for different projects so it's uh so there's something that i i kind of uh, learn mm. like along the way because it's uh because in the past usually what i do is uh, i'm trying to do my personal work on top of the professional work mm. it's just to like uh, break away so that and then look back at my professional work i will see like things from a different perspective so you won't kind of get like uh too new to, to the certain things mm. yeah but, but but this this kind of uh like Different projects uh, allows me to uh, kind of like exercise my brain muscle in, in, in a way that uh, you know like like training different uh, your your eyes to see different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so it's like, I would say it's a it was a fun experience uh, overall. Wow. Yeah. So. It's... Yeah, man. Looking from the side, oh, it's so nice to be on that project. I think. I, I wish I would I would, I had a chance also, but yeah, Fernandez def- definitely did very well on that project, and uh, I would also like to say that um our task handling was also pretty organic. So earlier, Kush mentioned that um we used to have uh we we get um requests, and then he would distribute. But there are also times where um, uh we need to also cater to requests that are not uh, listed down. So those mm-hmm. those kind of tasks we call them uh, ninja tasks. Oh, um, ninja tasks. So in yeah. So in that sense, um, we also open up ourselves to be more organic and more fluid to adapt, mm. and um, in a way that it's it's not too uh, destructive for the workflow because we have to make sure that um, it doesn't uh, ruin uh, what we already planned for the master. Uh, as long as we can do it uh, on time and we can handle it. Um, we usually uh, take up tasks and we also handle um, tasks from different cells also. Mm. If to, just to elaborate what Jason said, back in the day when we were, you know, the project was still, was, was still like a starting point. We were still doing, was it in the, was in the pre-production, mm. uh, the project. We were doing everything together. So we, me, Jace, uh, me, JC, uh, we had Natasha, we had Shamin back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were handling anything that was thrown at us. So mm. we, uh, I remember I was doing ships, I was doing characters, I was doing world. Every week it was something else. But mm. now as we've grown over the years, the team mm. has become more and more um, expert in something, in, in a particular uh, discipline. Mm-hmm. So I remember two or three, Two or three years ago, I was handled. I was handling characters, mm-hmm. and uh, since then, the art director said, "Okay, you design the char- you design this character. Now all characters are yours." <laughs> now, so so since then, I've just been doing character design. Right. And then when Fernandez and Jason <coughs> came 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 aboard, uh, we recognized their strengths. Uh, you know, Fernandez is, is is really good at something. Jason is really good at something. Mm. So. Both of them are now experts in their own uh, discipline, and we have sort of fitted them into our our development process. Yeah. So mm. uh, Fernandez has been has been doing the like mostly the world concept arts mm. since uh, in this project, and Jason has been doing the ships and all those. Mm. Yeah, right. and then we and then we see and then we see each other's timeline that okay if. Uh, Okay, now the task is over. So now, what do I do? And if there is a priority in the other cell, like let's say, world cell, if needs some more help, and that's when like right. Jason, Jason will go, and then you know he will help out uh, Fernandez, right? Or right. yeah, so right. something like that. But over the years, we have kind of like gone become a bit expert on something. So now, mm. one concept artist does not necessarily do everything. Mm. Yeah. So each of how, you guys have cut a niche, right, for for yourselves, right, of yep. sorts. Yes, exactly. It's it's, it's kind of cool because it, it feels like you guys are like the um kind of like you know in like in like Warcraft, you are sending the peons to build stuff, and you guys are the ones building stuff for <laughs> everyone, <laughs> so that they can do they can do their stuff efficiently, right? The developers can do their stuff well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like in yeah. Warcraft. Yeah, 
Build <laughs> mine and you guys are the most important ones, man. Without you guys. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys maintain that high level of quality of artwork you know, each time? Uh, I would say that um, for us, after a while being on project, um, we just kind of became used to the art direction. And of course, uh, Kobe did a very good job on documenting them. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think uh, we are able to deliver um, pretty consistent results. Mm -hmm. And other than that, we also have review sessions and feedback sessions to keep us on track. But I believe that um, each of us in the team has a deep understanding for the level of quality and the standard that is expected out of them. Mm. Um, not only that, I think um, they are maintaining uh, consistency in each of their work, but I believe uh, everyone is also trying to reach a higher benchmark uh, with each work they do, which is also why I really enjoy working with them because it, it's very, very motivating to be around them, seeing that they're always striving to reach a higher, higher point. It's, mm. it's, really, it's really nice and refreshing to see. Mm. Good thing that you brought up about documentation, um, Jason, because I think when, as students, right, no one ever taught us that, hey, art direction needs, mm. like, proper documentation to guide us to follow, you know, in a certain look or certain style, right? Um, maybe you could share with some of, like, my, the viewers here um, how, how a, a documentation would look like, you know, a, a art direction documentation. How, how does that look like or sound like? Uh, so basically, our direction document should consist of um, pillars. Uh, what we call pillars basically means the structure for the art direction for your project. It, it mm. can be for an animation, it can be for games, it can be for an art book, for example. Um, so these kind of pillars, they build up, um, they, they act as a core for what is going to be for the project. For example, if you want the project to be flamboyant and that has to be the core of your project, so that has to be the pillar. Uh, flamboyant, uh, perhaps colorful, or maybe, um, what is that one? Uh, maybe dark, for example. Um, again, this kind of pillars, they need to be uh, what we call high level. Uh, basically means it needs to be um, uh, pretty general and it it should only evoke the emotion part first before diving into um, more specific things like the genre or the 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 style of it that can come later um, as long as we have a pillar that encompass all the emotions of your project uh, narrowed down uh, to maybe perhaps uh, three pillars Mm -hmm. I would say I, that could be the start of your art direction document. Art direction document will also, you know, uh, has to also align with the game direction and, mm. the, create, and the creative direction as well. Mm. Because after all, if let's say your game is set in, um, in history, mm -hmm. right? it's, in hist it's a historical game. And if your art direction is very modern, you know, mm. then it doesn't really sink in well, unless yeah. it's an actual, actual stand that okay, no, I'm going to be, our game is going to be modern art style, but our topic is going to be historical. Mm. It could be, it could be, but uh, basically, it needs to be in sync with the creative and the game direction, and then uh, uh, it's like a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, given by the art director himself or herself, and then uh, they need to be, you know, it needs to be approved by the creative direction because, after all, it's the creative director's vision that the art director is bringing to life, right? Mm. And uh, it can, it the art direction document also needs to have some proven examples. So, let's say uh, characters or environment or or ships. Uh, what kind of an art direction are you, are, you, are you talking about? So it is always backed up by an illustrated piece of character, of shape, of world, so that when they when the art director presents it to the you know, entire floor, all the, the whole devs, it's not just words. It is also like 
proven with an image that okay this is how it's going to look this is how it's going to look and mm-hmm. then the the all the the project can you know imagine mm-hmm. uh how it's going how the game is going to turn out to be mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's like overall yeah it's it's like an inspirational document also for us and and a guiding document because let's yeah. say tomorrow let's say tomorrow we have uh new uh new artists joining in like newcomers and instead of we guiding them every step by step you know okay no you do this this is how the characters to be done this is how environments to be done they can just refer to that document and then start the work already right right because that's that's what the word direction right in art means an art direction it's guiding everyone in the team to produce work that looks similar to you know what was decided by the art director right yes right? and 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 you know having everyone come together and say okay this is the kind of style this is the kind of look that we want to go for that will harmonize the entire game and yeah you know so everything will look coherent everything will look pretty much like they belong there and not out of place unless it's specifically intended it also comes down to when we recruit someone right Mm-hmm. it it follows the same principle because when we are recruiting someone we are trying to see his or her portfolio whether it matches to our art direction or not to our art style mm-hmm. or not and if it does then you are yeah then then yes we we can hire you but if it does not let's say someone's this happens when we when we try to ask agencies like third party agencies to support our game to do some designs for us Mm-hmm. and we go through like um uh selection process so let's say there's one agency who does really good work but then when they do the test it suddenly becomes all stylized and then mm-hmm. we're like okay we we can't it doesn't match with our direction so we cannot so yeah it comes down to recruitment as well are there any favorite projects that uh one of you no know, your favorite projects that you've worked on so far yeah i would say yeah immortal phoenix is one of my oh well, yeah favorite project that I've worked so far. It's it's pretty short but it's a uh, my but in terms of my involvement it's not long but but that period I kind of I do enjoy my uh my stay over there. Right. Yeah. Right. So I I would use that as a uh, like I would say that that's one of one of my favorite projects that I've uh, worked so far because it's a uh, first of all it's stylized so it's something that uh I wouldn't mind doing for my personal project. but now that i have this opportunity to do it for a professional uh, setting i'm like oh okay, this is like uh this is pretty cool like i can now like, apply what i uh learn from mm. and uh yeah so and also like i like the uh, it's kind of like uh, open up my horizon like it gave you more range right more, art more yeah range. more range yeah because sometimes when you work on certain art direction for for too long uh you you might be too like uh stick to it like you you kind of like uh your horizon is kind of like being narrow now yes yes to that. so so sometimes when uh by working on another like a uh, another kind of style mm. it uh it kind of like um, kind of relax that the other side of my uh, brain kind of like, oh, okay now i don't mm. have to think so much about uh but is it like, too realistic because there's still some room for it to uh play because it's stylized so i can uh so it doesn't have to fully respect to the like the, the physics like for, for instance as for my side i uh haven't been involved in any other project than what i am currently working on okay uh so i can't really say that much but i i do really enjoy working on my current project for me it was the the time when we went to e3 so this was 2018 um i remember uh we took our game to e3 and i the all the stuff that you see in the game was was i was very happy that some of my designs have been ah uh, yes and they are also mm-hmm. part of the e3 trailer so that was my favorite moment and i will always remember that um we what what title was that was the for the trailer It was still Skull and Bones. Uh, ah, okay. Skull and Bones, two thousand and eighteen. There were uh, Kobe went in two thousand seventeen, and he gave me the opportunity yeah. to go in two thousand eighteen. 
right, right. and we went with the team uh it was a great great experience about 12 days experience was very very good to see the environment to see uh people from all over the world playing our game that we created yes first hand you know first hand seeing that experience and uh us like people like me uh we were given the task of guiding the player in e3 right. in where when we went to e3 right. right. we were told to like okay um the player is playing the game and then we are i'm standing behind him or her and mm. then if they have any questions i need to answer so mm. and to see them you know shouting at each other because they were playing in groups they were playing in groups like uh uh it was pvp mm-hmm. and uh they were in groups like groups of 5 or 3 and then it was so good to hear people from different languages cuz we had these youtube influencers mm. that come into the the playtest the the the, the playstation uh, play sessions and uh they were just shouting in arabic some guys were shouting in german wow and i we couldn't understand anything we were there to like answer them but it, i don't know whether they were they were cursing or asking a question <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so but it was very thrilling to to see like they're talking about your designs mm. while they are playing your game mm. it was a good feeling that was my favorite moment yeah of yeah. my six years yeah Didn't didn't you mention that you met Hideo Kojima? Oh yes, we we bumped into <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, Hideo Kojima. No, so what happened was uh I'll just quickly say but uh we had a break time between between our schedules of of duty. Uh we had to go to the Staples Center uh you know be ready for the players to come in mm-hmm. and then and then we had a break time. So we me and Andy, one of my colleagues, we went back to the hotel. uh to freshen up and then we went we were going back to the staple center walking mm. because there were no cabs available there's no bus so we we thought we'd just walk and we crossed the street and andy kept poking me like hey hey check 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 it's hideo it's hideo what what hideo what are you talking about <laughs> so <laughs> cuz at that time i was uh, i knew who's who's hideo kojima but then just by saying hideo you don't really understand what who, what hideo so and then i saw him and then he's like walking towards us and he had these two people that he was walking with and we walked past him and then he said and then i asked him hey why are we walking past we should actually take a photograph or you know or an autograph or something so i went back and then i asked him can we take a photograph with you and then his the person he he was walking with he said he he came forward that that no that no 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 we we are we are uh who are you and we i mean we are going so and then hideo came like he 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 came he he took that guy separately he said yes i'll take a photo with you so uh. <laughs> and then we me and andy we took a photo with him and yeah that was it we didn't really <laughs> it was just a fan fanboying moment uh i'm sure yeah what a, what is your favorite moment as a team and you can answer this as a team or individually My favorite moment as a team is uh definitely um uh how close we've gone to know each other throughout the years. I think it's not so much a work stuff anymore, but um I just really enjoy um just the social interactions with the people and it's just it's not just within the team but also uh within the art team. Uh I enjoy talking to them, I enjoy hanging out with them. Mm-hmm. uh i think i think that for me was the best part of the team it's not so much a work anymore it's more about the people the people mm-hmm. inside the studio they they all they all very nice people uh, around me and yeah i'm very grateful for that completely agree with jason and like uh like the, in in the start team right i i really love the how everyone is uh, very motivated and they get the they are willing to share their knowledge you know like whenever they encounter new updates like mm. whether is it like oh there's new blender tutorial oh there's a new uh there's a new movie coming up oh there's this uh uh this new uh netflix shows like oh look at this cinematography so they were mm. like everyone is like, sharing uh 
mm. uh, the latest uh, updates, and then you feel that, what oh, no, like you feel very motivated also because everyone is like shared, like exchanging, you know, kind of like positive energy. Mm. So and uh, and also sometimes we also hang out after work. Mm. Uh, so it's more like uh, it's more than just work itself. It's kind of like a good balance between work life balance. Mm. So, mm. so it's uh, so everyone is very professional at the end of the day. It's like, you know, when it comes to work, you know, we know uh, we will give our best critics. But then we, we kind of like, you know, uh, then when it's fun, you know, we kind of like have fun and you just chill and then, uh, so you uh, you felt that, uh, like for me, uh, it doesn't feel exactly like work. Mm. You feel like, oh, finally, first I get to work as a concept uh, in the in the video game industry. So that is really like, uh, not exactly work for me because I'm enjoying mm. what I'm doing. Mm. And then secondly, it's like the, the whole team bonding. It's mm. uh, very strong, very uh, bonded. And so, so it feels like, uh, it feels like a second home. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I mean, prior to the COVID situation, before that is like, like I, I remember there was a period where we, home, we see each other almost every day. Like mm. even on weekend, we hang out. And then like maybe go for like some <laughs> wow like, like photo walk or maybe like if there's any like uh art exhibition mm. art gallery then we will just uh meet up and then yeah. hang out and it's like oh then the next day we are back to work again so it's uh yeah I love this this whole culture that yeah. they have yeah. for me it was uh it's also as a team not just us not just me Fernandez Jason and Kobe but uh the other guys who came for the figure drawing classes and the still mm. life painting classes, there were other artists as well involved, like the lighting designer, mm. we have the 3D artist, uh, we had even non-artists also Extra came. Artists. Yeah, non -artists. Yeah, they, they also used to come to do all these. We used to spend about two hours, two and a half hours every Wednesday to do these sessions. So those those memories will, will always be there. Um, and I feel that our best moment as a team has not come yet. Because, wow. uh, yeah, because our we are still working on a project. Uh, I I think the launch of that project is going to be pretty pretty awesome for all of wow. us. That's that's going to be a cherished moment. Wow. You know, to see all that hard work put into so many years, finally see it uh, <clears throat> out there in in the hands of people. Uh, mm. playing that'll, that'll be one moment that i'm actually waiting for yeah i wow. agree yeah wow. the best is yet to come huh yeah, wow to come. fantastic okay. even the art book i'm sure we all have like so much of artwork done that uh i think there should be at least two art books for our <laughs> game <laughs> project <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the volume one, volume two. Yeah, yeah. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> volume one That's post gonna be awesome. Volume one post COVID, volume two pre <laughs> COVID. I'm <laughs> uh, sorry, pre COVID, volume one post COVID. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, last question for tonight. Um any tips for young guys or girls who are out there who are passionate about you know doing art and uh want to be a part of uh Ubisoft? I, I would say a uh, strong grasp in art fundamentals. Um, yeah, we're, we're really uh, keen about uh, have, uh, looking at those, uh, especially when it comes to looking at portfolios. Uh, I would say art fundamentals for me. Second, uh, on Jason's uh, point, it's, uh, yeah, fo focus on your fundamentals, like really like nail down. Uh, the better you understand like how things work, right? And, like uh, the functionality mm -hmm. uh, like in real life, right? Then the easier it is the, as you progress in your concept part. Like when you're doing uh, your work, when, uh, especially when you're executing certain tasks because mm -hmm. you have uh, strong fundamentals, like knowledge, right? right. Even though it's, uh, it may not be, let's say, it can be a different subject matter, but the basic fun fundamentals of like, basic perspective, anatomy, how light works, uh, is still very crucial. So that's uh, something that we look up for and you know, like, uh, showcasing our design thinking and problem solving skills. 
And uh, I think in, in our team, we we kind of we are very accepting when people make mistakes, you know. And then uh, because it's a uh, as long as it's not major mistake, right? I think it's a uh, we we are still that like, you know, it's it's an opportunity for you to grow. And uh, mm. we 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 always uh, welcome people to like, to keep trying, yeah. Because as long as you have the open mind, and then uh, and yeah, that. Like, willing to accept, you know, failure and then bounce back up again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jason and Fernandez are are perfectly right when it comes to art fundamentals and stuff. And I remember when we, I was part of interviewing Fernandez and that time he had his portfolio where he had some examples of uh, these problem solving sketches he had he had a project that he had in his portfolio and you could see from his sketches that he's trying to solve a problem uh by by using perspective and basically sketching uh and that was one of the reasons why he stood out to us because we could we could say that yeah he's he doesn't just fall into the people who just create art to make it look cool but also to solve problems so uh definitely art fundamentals and all how do you use your art because after all art is a medium right it's a tool Mm -hmm. digital painting sketching um sculpting is like a tool right so but after all what are you trying to tell us what are you what's Mm -hmm. that so to keep that at a high level is is good it's a good grasp of it is good to have a good grasp of uh, art but also from uh, i would just like to emphasize that uh, apart from art there's also as an artist it is important to you know grow elsewhere as well like we would like to see uh how is your uh what what kind of experiences you've had your knowledge about other other fields of art let's say you are a good dancer there because you come up you having an because I'm an interior designer, right? Fernandez mm-hmm. was animation. Jason was engineer. So we we come up with from different backgrounds, and we were not like born artists. We were we didn't start directly from an art school. So doesn't mean that I mean now we are concept artists. Doesn't mean that we don't have anything uh, like my interior design or Jason's engineer or Fernandez animation. Doesn't mean that that doesn't have any value at all. Mm-hmm. We obviously learned something from there, and that's why we are here today. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, keep an open mind, be curious, uh, go do other, other, other activities as well. So your communication, your knowledge about life is also equally important to be an artist. Um, yes. So yeah, just, just trust your guts, be happy of what you're doing. And, uh, Nowadays, I think you need to show off your work a lot in on social media to get some, you know, feedback and critiques and stuff mm-hmm. that will keep you engaged all the time and even encouraging you to do more and more and more and more and more. So the way, I mean, I always look at Fernandez and Jason and my Kobe and JC's Instagram to just, it's a lot of inspiration out there for a lot of people. Mm. And Answer, answering back to your previous question that how do we keep ourselves motivated and the standards very high is because one of the reasons is also social media because we follow so many of these American artists from Frank Frazetta from those because you know, they're still fan fan pages and even today's artists like John Park and uh, Vitaly Bulgaro oh, wow, uh, yeah. so many people right Jama Jirabe of course so these people are always there on your feed, right? either on Facebook or Instagram. So mm-hmm. you look at their work and you're like, shit, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to let's go back to computer and let's start painting. <laughs> so these kind of things they keep motivating us. Right, uh, right. But yeah, uh, do not uh, people for for the new upcoming like people who are passionate about concept art. It's very it's very competitive and it can drain you a lot that oh my god there's so much of cooler work out there how am i going to be always better you know how can i top that there's no need to top that mm. you just just be calm switch it off switch off the social media for a while be in the present mm. and just see what you're doing 
just mm-hmm. zoom out zoom out a little bit see what you're doing maybe show a couple of friends that hey this is my artwork what do you think and just take that feedback that's it. you do, you, you don't need to show it to 50 people just maybe one or two people is fine you can even show it to your mom and dad because if they if like non artists cannot see what you have drawn then mm-hmm. then you definitely know it's uh you there's something that you need to improve on so um yeah just be in the present and be calm about it be very calm about it no need to rush the concept art you know after after a while because because back in the day when i was in fzd my seniors you know we used to keep meeting for lunch and all and i used to always stress myself that oh my god how are you guys doing this i and then my friend he told me one thing and actually my senior was way worse than some of the juniors some of the the first batch like my batch mates and he was not stressed about it at all and i, I was i i always had a very uh interesting view about like why why is he why is he like that he he's always so happy go lucky even though his artwork is not like at the, at the top, top quality level and then he told me that listen all us artists we are all going to reach that mark one way or the other like that high level mm-hmm. that we all talk about everyone is reaching everyone you know everyone has a different growth but we all will hit that level somewhere sometime mm-hmm. yeah we will somehow reach that top of the mountain maybe in 2 years or maybe in 10 years but you will reach if you keep continuing doing this so in his mind he knew that he is not good right now but he had that thing in him that he's going to keep continue doing it and right now when i see his work this was i'm talking about 5 sorry 6 7 years ago mm-hmm. and now i see his instagram he's like one of the most wanted concept artists in india right wow yeah so if you have the drive right so your drive the your inside your internal drive should be like quite deep mm. your skill level does not matter your skill mm. level even if it is like very little but if your drive is big that drive is going to push your skill way way high higher than your 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 peers in a few years time if you have the drive in you so mm. don't worry about the skill that's what i would say i i, I like to add uh, something to what krish has mentioned also i think it's also important for uh, fresh grads especially um to know that if you don't get into ubisoft that doesn't mean it's the end mm-hmm. um there's definitely a lot of chance out there and a lot of uh opening uh opportunities also and yeah like what chris uh, like what chris mentioned is um be determined about your work and always uh strive for it even if you don't land your opportunity in ubisoft right after you graduate it's it's totally okay and uh, just keep doing your work and i think like yeah we each of us has that growth and everyone will reach it ultimately mm. all right yeah cool thank you guys for sharing all of that um and and really i really just want to appreciate your time here and yeah yeah um, thanks, thanks for, thanks for having us thanks dom yeah you guys are thanks welcome for having us